everlasting life. So we receive everlasting life because we have grown from of him. 48 says, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. So that we may not be fooled into relying on typologies of the old. Because they cause death. This is the bread which comes down from heaven. That one may eat of it and not die. That one may eat of the bread which comes from heaven. This is to reveal to us that every other thing was then sent down from of heaven. Praise the Lord. So it says, this is the bread which comes down from heaven. That one may eat of it and not die. 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Of course, such words cause quarrels because men want to rely on types and shadows. And so when you continue in verse 52, it caused the Jews to quarrel. And I skip. And I'll go to verse 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I said to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and eat his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my drink, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live in him, because, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. So our life is because of Jesus. Verse 16, I've skipped. There are for many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? Beloved, it is not hard for you to understand that your fullness is from of Christ. Just as it was hard for this. For you it is easy to understand that as you feed on the fullness of his knowledge, you have life. Verse 61 says, when, Jew, when Jesus knew in, his, in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But some of you, but there are some of you who do not believe. Because of course Jesus knew from the very beginning who they were, who did not believe, and who would betray him. I've skipped and gone to verse 66. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? Now I want you to listen to Peter's answer. A man that has understood that he cannot thirst again when he feeds from of Christ. Verse 66. But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let me repeat verse 68 and 69. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. When you understand that, you believe it and you transcend that and you know because knowledge is your conviction. It says then you cannot go. And that is what kept Peter 
and the rest of the disciples when everyone was being scattered because Jesus says you do not expect the tricks here you expect to feed on me my body you feed on me my blood and that is your life beloved Jacob's wall well as long as much as it has been esteemed now where there is Jacob's well bless all traditions of men bless all things that have been used world over as much as they have been esteemed as for you what makes sense for you is the life of God nothing else praise the Lord nothing else nothing and nothing else so he says to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life also we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ the son of the living God we cannot draw from anywhere else we draw from Christ I want you to take one minute and tell the Lord thank you because I know how to draw by your knowledge I draw from you I draw from you thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord because I draw from you I draw from the abundance of your love I draw from the abundance of your wisdom you have become unto me wisdom I draw from you always in the name of Jesus thank you Lord I give you praise Lord because you complete me since you are enough for me thank you Lord and give the Lord praise because he is he completes you he is enough the Lord is just enough for you in Jesus mighty name amen thank you choir we may take our seats in Jesus mighty name amen Isaiah chapter 61 In Jesus mighty name good morning it's my honor to minister the Word of God to us uh, in John chapter 4 when Jesus is having a conversation with the Samaritan woman the Samaritan woman tells Jesus are you greater than our father Jacob that is from around verse 11 she tells him the well is too deep and it was dug by our father Jacob. How can you draw from it deep as it is and you have nothing to draw from? And you're speaking about living water which when someone drinks of that water they cannot thirst again. What kind of water is that? Then Jesus starts explaining to him. And he reveals to the lady that he himself is that water. Praise the Lord. We do not come to Jesus to take things from of him that we may have life. We come to receive himself. Amen. And that is why even when the Samaritan woman esteemed the wells, the well of Jacob that he had dug, he was a big figure in scripture because we understand how much he, has, he was loved. Praise the Lord. But that history of any generals that as they are called now it does not found like it does not establish our faith our faith is established even as we believe in Christ Jesus so we may have them as examples but the substance is Christ amen okay Isaiah 61 uh, I will start from verse 1 The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to
to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Just allow me to finish this verse. Eh? And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Now pause there and go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 from verse uh, 15. I hope it is. Luke chapter 4. Let me actually start from verse 14. Scripture says, Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and the news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in the synagogues, being glorified by all. Verse 16. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20. Then he closed the book. But when we go back to Isaiah 61, this is not where the, the account ends. It goes way beyond. But Jesus closes the book in verse 20 here, and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Minus the additions that had been put there. The book of Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. When you have time, you read the whole of it. It's a big and account full of uh, the life of God, even concerning Cornelius, Peter, and his vision. But I'm going to read from verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word which you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Let me repeat verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. What has verse 14 of Luke chapter 4 said? Verse 14 has said, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. Verse 38 of Acts chapter 10 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. These things are worded differently, but they are communicating the same truth. Praise the Lord. In Luke chapter 4 verse 14, Jesus returns in the power of the Holy Spirit what does that mean? All that was about him was the Holy Spirit that empowers him, even through the knowledge of the word of God. Hallelujah. Because we understand that the power of God is the gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation. Now, when he came and he opened the book, the book said that the Spirit of God who empowered him and brought him from the wilderness into Galilee, what does the power of God say? The power of God is upon me. I'm now substituting the spirit of God. 
is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Praise the Lord. So, the gospel is to the poor. Now, it does not mean poor them that have no money. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because we understand that God is not calling you unto salvation so that he can place monies in your way. If you do not find a job, you will remain poor. Praise the Lord. And so you will blame the Lord that you are poor and yet you are born again. There are many Christians that are broke. In fact, the richest men are not even believers. But they know how to make money. So, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal. Underline that. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery to the recovery of sight to the blind. Now that blind, primarily like we said last week, that when we speak of healing, that iyama or health, is not primarily speaking about physical, so that men can run to Christ because he has fed them with bread. We run to Christ because there is spiritual life. He is the spirit whom that, him that we believe. So he says, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Now, who was the, who was the captor? Who had captivated us? Or who had captured us? So that now there may be liberty proclaimed unto us. You see how healing is way beyond the physical healing that men look at? So, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit has come to proclaim liberty to the captives. Who had captured you? And we, dead in our trespasses, we have been made free from the bondage even of sin. Praise the Lord. So what was the captive? What was the captor? Sin. Praise the Lord. Because we had died there. So when the Lord heals you from captivity, that captivity is sin. So that no believer can claim sin again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, there is captivity, the nature, and there is captivity, the mind. Praise the Lord. Right now, as we are seated here, we are all experiencing healing. Not healing of the nature, but healing of the mind. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he says, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. The recovery is that that sight has been there, but it has been covered in a way. But with the illumination of the gospel, the gospel that shines, someone sees things and they're like, we have believed and have come to know that you, are, you, that you have the words of eternal life. See, that is what Peter told Jesus when he, asked them, when he asked them, do you also want to go? Because when he spoke that it is only me that you have to feed on, that you may have eternal life, the disciples were like, eh, this is a hard saying. Who can believe it? And when someone sees something hard, what do they do? Not hard because it is hard to accomplish, but the mind cannot comprehend. And that is why for you to understand things that are mysteries to the world, you need to have the Spirit of God like you have. Praise the Lord. Because then you are spiritual, and then you discern the spiritual things spiritually. Amen. Then it says, to set liberty at to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So who is the oppressor? Sin. Praise the Lord. The nature. All that is a description of healing. And that is why when now Peter is speaking in Acts chapter 10, he says, who oh Jesus, when he was anointed even by the Holy Spirit, just as we have seen in Luke 14, in Luke 4, 14, that Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. That anointing is what causes him to do that. Praise the Lord. So that now even brings you to know that you are not void of that gift of healing. Praise the Lord. Let me ask you, are you anointed? Okay, some may not be sure. Are you anointed? Now, that anointing is what causes you to preach the gospel to the poor. See, Jesus, the spirit of God is upon me. Is the spirit of God in you? Now, that spirit is because you have been anointed. 
to preach the gospel to the poor. Them that are without the knowledge. Poverty is visible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, poverty of life is where you come with medicine, the gospel. Praise the Lord. Them that are dead in trespasses, them that are dead in sin, and what you come with, you come with the excellence which is of life. So he says, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. What is the acceptable year of the Lord? You see, uh, sometimes we say this. Okay, I'll say that when we go to, to, to interpreting of tongues. But there is something that we usually say, this is the day that the Lord has made. It is not this Sunday that it is the day the Lord has made. The day is the day of the Lord. The day of the gospel that when believed, that is your day. So even tomorrow is the day that the Lord has made. Because that day is not limited to Monday to Sunday. But limited to Christ Jesus being the day that when you receive. You, and that is why scripture says you will, be, you will rejoice and be glad in it. That day is Christ Jesus. So the acceptable year of the Lord is Christ himself. That is why Christ is proclaimed. Hallelujah. So as you are proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord, then you are ministering healing even to them that are without life. So let's go back to Acts chapter 10. So I can finish that. And then we... We go to 1 Corinthians. But first, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good. And that word and is the Greek word K-A-I to mean indeed, to mean also, to mean even. So that doing good is the healing. Praise the Lord. So who went about doing good? Indeed healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. When the Lord is with... The reason why he was able to do good. The reason why he was able to heal them that are oppressed by the devil. Is because God was with him. What does that mean? With the Lord in you, with God in you, you are not insufficient. You have the ability in you to cause healing to them that are without life. But I want you to see how Peter demonstrates this, even to, to the very specific details. He says, who went about doing good and healing those who were oppressed by the devil? Praise the Lord. Now, we in church, we know we have been healed. But I've just told us that we are experiencing healing. How come? How are we experiencing healing, yet we know we have been healed? Praise the Lord. John chapter 8. I'll start from verse uh, 29. John chapter 8, he says, And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. And what are the things that please the Lord? You believe. So there are, by, when we say those things, that to do those things, faith is the, is the completion of all those things. So what does a believer have to do? Believe. That is all the things that you do. Now verse 30. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Many believed in him. So that now the next chapter or the next verses, he's speaking to those who had believed in him. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, 31. Now the story changes. He has started 
he has stopped speaking to those so that he might make them believe. Now he's speaking to those who have believed. Just as we are speaking healing to you that have believed already. Unless there is someone here who is not yet born again. Anyone? Glory to God. Now, he says, Then Jesus, verse 31, Then Jesus said to those who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What did Jesus say in Isaiah 61? To take you away from captivity. And yet he's speaking to them that have believed Jesus. He's saying the truth shall make you free. What does it mean? Could there be a way that a believer, because they have not exposed themselves to the truth, they are not free? So that now when you expose truth, you are exposing healing to them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that as you are exposing the truth to them, you are exposing healing to them. Because he said, he has come to relieve you of captivity. He has come to bring you out of captivity. That is the eternal life that he gives you. That is the iyama that he gives to you. Praise the Lord. Because you have believed. But then Jesus has a special message to you. He says, if you abide in me, you abide in my word. You keep my word dear to you. Like we have said, we shall not draw from the well even as has been esteemed from world from the beginning of the world. For us, we shall draw from of Christ. Then he says, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. That, what, mean, what does that mean is that you continue learning. You continue to be students of my word. Then you know the truth. So it means you have a duty as a believer to give yourself wholly to this word. Because right there, is your healing. Isn't it surprising that as Paul is teaching, of course he teaches gifts in Ephesians. He teaches gifts in, in uh, Romans. But there is a detail that he gives in Corinthians. And do you know the, the, the background of the Corinthian church? How they had been. And that is why he tells them, you shall know the truth. Because even as you are believers, there are things you need to continue knowing, not breaking. You are free by principle. You are free by nature. Your nature is the spirit. But you, the spirit does not directly, directly interface with the world. Praise the Lord. And that is why God had to put on flesh so that he might manifest on earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so when Jesus appears to his disciples after resurrection and they say you are a ghost. He says no. It is impossible for you to see a ghost like this. I cannot be a ghost when I am like this. So you are a spirit, but you need, let me say it, you need this body. And that is why when we speak about your body, it is important to take care of it. Because without your body, you will not manifest the spirit man that you are. Your spirit feeds your mind, your entirety, the entirety of your thinking, your decision making capacity. That then as your soul identifies with what is in your spirit your soul has the ability to communicate and influence your body. Now, what Jesus is meaning to them that have believed is that when you abide in my word, the word which is in your spirit, you remain my disciples so that your soul is taught continually. Then you know the truth even in your mind and the truth shall make you free first in your mind and then in your body. That is your complete healing. Now, you know that you have the life of God in you. But again, there is a, a wound that you are experiencing even in your body. But you remember that you have spiritual health even in your mind, even in your spirit. 
And as you continue in that word, you remain a disciple. You do not allow the, the wound to communicate to your soul that your soul starts telling you, you know what, you are so sick. But you continue remaining in the knowledge of the Lord. You know the truth. Your soul understands the truth. Your soul communicates that truth to your body. And then your body is like, I have no choice. I have allowed. I have allowed the testimony of the Lord in, my, in the spirit part of me to communicate that life. And before you know, you are living even as you are alive in Christ Jesus. So the healing that he's speaking about to you that is a believer is that you receive that which is the testimony of the spirit. Then you let that testimony of the spirit come out to your soul, in your mind, and then you communicate that life to your body. Praise the Lord. In the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Chapter 11. Hmm. And he says, let me start from verse 27. He's speaking actually starting uh, the, the bigger part of 1 Corinthians 11. He's communicating about the conduct of the Lord's Supper. Now we shall go that in details when we reach there. Understanding what is called the Lord's Supper. But let me just bring out something, even concerning the gift of healing. Even as we finish it, verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and of the blood and of the blood and the and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For who for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Not discerning the Lord's body as life. Praise the Lord. For, for this reason, listen, for this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. For the reason of failure to discern. The life of God in the body of Christ, the life of God in the blood of Christ, many are sick. Because even when they partake of it, it is not out of the conviction that that is life for them. Praise the Lord. Of course, there is deeper concerning when you go to just the Lord's Supper, if that is the context we were taking. But in the context of the gift of healing, it is important that you discern the body of the Lord, even as you eat of his word, that that is life indeed for you, so that you are not looking for extra things around the body of Christ to give you healing, and the word is for you to speak and proclaim. Have you seen people like that? Where for them, they know the word of God, yes, it is true, but as for some things, they have to look for solutions elsewhere. They have not discerned the body of Christ as life indeed for them. Praise the Lord. The things that we speak about when we are gathered here, that is life for you. Discern it as life. So that as you're feeding from of the word, that is life for you. Believe it. There will not be sickness. And when you're speaking to someone that may be experiencing sickness, Speak to them even with this knowledge. Because by understanding that, there cannot be sickness in the body of him that has designed the body of Christ as life for them. Praise the Lord. Now he says in verse 31, For if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Now they tell us, of course this has been taught, judge yourself. Because when you judge yourself, you cannot be judged. Does it ring a bell somewhere? You cannot be judged when you judge yourself. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Sorry, chapter 2. Let me start from verse 13. It says, 
These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the, cannot, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Verse 15. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. So, your judging, the judging yourself that he speaks about in chapter 11, is that you judge yourself as spiritual. That is the judging yourself. Because it is in the spiritual realm that you are able to discern the body of Christ as food indeed to you and as life indeed to you. Praise the Lord. And that is why there are some people who, who feel weak, who feel like they, they are worthless because they have not discerned themselves as spiritual. Beloved, when you live as the spirit man that you are, you have already judged yourself as worthy not because of your own doing, but as the Lord has spoken about you. And then there cannot be judgment. Judgment can be in the form of weakness, but then you cannot be judged even in sickness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that is health for you because you have discerned the body of Christ that you have fed on as life for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are spiritual and you carry life. And that is why even the gifts we are speaking about, they are called spiritual gifts. Special to you that is spiritual. Amen? So he says, but he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Praise the Lord. My prayer is that even as we continue in the study of these gifts, we might not be like them that do not understand that indeed they have been given these gifts to exercise themselves in them. Praise the Lord. But first, you need to judge yourself as being spiritual. Because there are many that may desire to walk in these things. But as a spiritual man, first of all, you have to know that it stems first from your life as a spirit being and then it causes life unto whoever, unto whoever now may have anything, be it physical. And that is why for you to experience physical health that lasts, you must have first of all obtained the spiritual life that happens. In any case, you may not need the laying on of hands of anyone. And that is why James says, is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church. When the elders are sick, who do they call? It is because an elder has learned to exercise themselves in this judgment. Isn't that what the writer to Hebrews says? They have learned to exercise themselves in this judgment. And so you cannot see them down with sickness. You cannot see them down with, with anything that causes unto the death, even of the, of the person that is resident in the inside of them. And so, the knowledge that you carry in the inside of you is your protection, is your perfection, is your health, even in the name of Jesus. Let me go back to Isaiah 61, and then we shall end with 53, where we started from last week, in the next few minutes. Isaiah 61 Verse 3, to console those who mourn in Zion, to comfort all who mourn. Sorry. To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees. Of righteousness. Underline that word trees of righteousness. That they may be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he may be glorified. You are called a tree of righteousness. Because trees bear fruits. 
Praise the Lord. Now, a sick person is helpless. A sick person, let me say bedridden. You take care of him in every way. But because of the healing that you receive, you are able to be productive. And that is why when he comforts you and he brings you beauty in the place of ashes, he causes you to be a tree of righteousness, that your righteousness bears fruit and is visible in every place. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because a healed person is a productive person. A healed person is a productive person. Many times people are unproductive just because there is something that has held them sick. But when they receive this knowledge, they become productive. Amen. We are not born again to be dependent on men and women of God. Because then we, our life is always dependent on what they say and what they have told us. If they say now something is following us, then we shall run and say, okay, how do I discover? Or how do I fight this which is fighting me? But when you know the truth, then you have wings to fly. Because you've been made free. You are a tree that whose righteousness bears fruit, and everyone that passes by can get a fruit, and they are healed of their thirst. Because in you is a tree of righteousness. And that is what Jesus says in John 7. In verse 38, I believe it is. Let me just confirm it for us here very quickly. Verse 38, yes. It says, see who believes in me, as the scripture has said. Not as you want to believe. Have you heard people who say, this thing we shall believe it? You know it is written like that, but, but unless that but is in scripture, when Jesus said you were told, but I tell you, in, Ma in Matthew chapter 5, there are lots of those things. He says, you were told, but I say. Unless that but is the word of God, it is not life for you. So he says, he who believes in me as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. That is the tree of righteousness that you are. Because a healed person is a productive person. Let us be on our feet. Father, I thank you because the saints in this place and them that follow me from home, they are healed and they are trees of righteousness. Out of their bellies flow rivers of living water because they shine life in every aspect of life. And I speak to them this morning that even as they give themselves entirely to this truth, to walk by it, to live by it, to move by it, to manifest life by it, Jesus, they shine even in the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. And beloved, I pray for you that you shine Jesus' life in every way. In the name of Jesus, you are a tree of righteousness because the Lord has dealt with you in a good way. He has dealt with you bountifully, and so you are a tree of righteousness. You are a tree of righteousness whose fruit is edible. The fruit of your life as a believer is edible. And so you disseminate life everywhere you go. You disseminate healing everywhere you go. You speak healing to men, them that have broken bones. You heal them because you have the life of God in you. In the name of Jesus, he has said you are a tree of righteousness. You are the planting of the Lord to his glory. You are a tree of righteousness. You are the planting of the Lord because the Lord is to be glorified. Verse 4, Isaiah 61 says, And they shall rebuild the old ruins. Anything that was sick, you build it again, even in the knowledge of God. It says, And they shall raise up the former desolations, so that you are taken back to the glory of God, because you have been healed even in your mind. Verse 6 says, But you shall be named the priests of the Lord that minister healing. They shall call you the servants of the Lord. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Praise the Lord. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Beloved, everlasting joy is your portion. Because you have received healing. 
You are the healed one of the Lord and everlasting joy is your portion. I do not want to leave before I finish Isaiah 53. Verse 1 says, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of, the, out of dry ground, he has no form of comeliness. And when we see him, he speaks about Jesus. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, so that as we learn Christ Jesus, we know that our transgressions were placed on him, and so we have obtained healing. He says, he was bruised, for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And so Peter with Revelation in chapter 2 verse 24, he says, by his stripes we were healed. Because as you study the word, it does not start functioning when you study it. You realize it is working when you study it. And you are even in that knowledge in the name of jesus hallelujah in one minute i want you to raise your voice and thank the lord god for the gift of jesus christ because his gift to us is healing raise your voice and bless him raise your voice and bless him thank you lord because the chastisement of our peace was placed upon you we are healed we are healed we are healed we are healed in Jesus' name. We are healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Join your hands and give the Lord praise. Give him glory, give him honor and adoration. He is good. He is glorious. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved, these are the words that it has been ministered by the Holy Spirit, you are free. Praise the Lord. And so we want to give. As you give, I want you to understand that you give because you are loved and because you are.